So to get this automatic transmission up on the converter properly so I can launch it, the brakes are uh, an important part of making that happen. So I need to make sure that they can hold the car still at the line. I decided to give the setup you see here a try first because it bolts in at the OEM location and the master cylinder itself was pretty inexpensive. It's from an older Mirage. It has a smaller diameter bore. So with some good force, it should be able to make more pressure than a factory one, even though I've eliminated the booster, as you see here. I'm also going to do a trick at the pedal side, try to get more leverage there, and see where that gets me. And if, uh, if that doesn't get it done, then I'll explore other options, including a tilt-in master cylinder, or maybe going to a booster with a vacuum pump like a lot of people do. the booster eliminated and the master set so far back, I figured I would have some issues with the brake lines that run from the master to the distribution block there, um, but it looks like one of them fits just fine. Now the other line, the factory master, connects on top right where this reservoir is. On this master, that line connects on the side. So what I'm going to do is try to custom bend the line for that, um, but I'm going to put a T in it so I can have a brake pressure sensor in line on that brake line. So what I have here are the brake lines that I'm going to use to go from the master to the distribution uh, with this T uh, in the middle so I can put the brake pressure sensor here. I got this tubing bender to bend these lines even though these lines were described as being hand bendable. I don't trust that I'm going to go with the bender and I made sure I got a couple extra lines for when I screw this up. I'm going to start by trying to bend this line 180 degrees like the factory one. All right, at 90 degrees, let's take a look at this thing and uh, see how it's working. doesn't look crushed or anything so I'm gonna continue so I got this started but I also got mistake number one in the books once you bend this you can't slide this back over so good thing I bought extra hope I don't mess it up again alright now I gotta figure out how to get out of this predicament alright I managed to get the bends I wanted and still keep this doohickey where I want it. It's kind of tricky to see here. But I'm going to run this T right about here, and then I'm going to run the other end of it to the master cylinder on the other side here, and then this is where I will put the sensor. And uh, I think it's going to have to go down in order to fit. I'm not sure yet. I'm going to run this auto meter sender. Uh, part number 2240. This is a brake slash nitrous pressure sensor. That's good to 2000 PSI, so uh, That's the sensor I'm going to use here. This T is threaded and flanged For an M10 by 1.0 brake thread with a flare there inverted flare not a bubble I found out um, the sensor Is eighth inch NPT so what I have to do is use this adapter that goes from eighth inch to M10 by 1.0 flare. So there you can get a look at what the T and the sensor look like installed. I used a little plastic OEM bracket as you can see between the two brake lines uh, to keep them in line there. And what I'll do is I'll use that hole on the T to bolt the T to the firewall so it's good and solid and I'll use a spacer in between to hold it out where it needs to be uh, an inch or so away from the firewall. 
Then I just need to make up that line that goes from the other side of the T to the master. I bent this line up to go from the T to the master cylinder. So that's it. The brake lines came out great. I got my sensor in there. Decent placement. I'm okay with it. And I'll hook that to my engine management so I can log that sensor. Then in the future I can see what kind of pressures I have and see if I need to make modifications. And when I do, I can see if anything changes. I want to thank all you wrenchers out there for watching and I'll see you next time. Put cheese on it.